strands It's been suggested Maybe I wanna be your best friend Yeah, yeah Blinding my eye holes And just trying hard to see I can tell by your middle finger That you're warming up to me Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you might be in time and space. Kenny is here. Big change today. He talked me into it. Kenny has talked me into loading DCS World. Now, I want to tell you right off the bat, if you have an antivirus, it's going to piss you off. So I started loading it last night on Steam and uh, got into it. And it was loading, and I'm like, well, I'll go watch a movie or something. It's going to take forever. So I wake up uh, a little later, get back over to the computer, and it's stopped. And it hasn't even really gotten through a good portion of the, the download, and it says stopped. So then I keep telling it, resume, 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 and it says, nah, it's stopping. So I dig a little more, press a couple more buttons, and it says disk error, save disk error. So right before that too, which I ignored, the antivirus when trying to install it popped up and said, flight sim DLL is a virus. What? DCS world 15 years in operation and they haven't worked that one out. So then I do a little bit more digging to find out, well, what is the save disk error? And it says, uh, it says that the PDF is in Russian and in English. But for whatever reason, the PDF is going to come up as virus too. So you might as well just disable your antivirus. And continue. I'm pissed off that I had to do that at all. What's pissing me off even more is I went to go find a keyboard command printout. And they're like, oh, on the official forums, hey, we recommend these, these sites. 
So the second site I go to, this site has uh, used your IP illegally and uh, don't save and call us now. And oh my God, the world is ending. Your computer's locked up. For God's sake, don't shut it down. You're going to lose data. You better call us right now. Never seen any shit like that before. So, pretty pissed off. Eh. What can you do, right? So I got it loaded, and one of the nice things is, is it did manage to find my joystick and set up the basic controls nicely. So I've got my, uh, you know, I've got uh, the pitch and the roll, and I've got trim all set, and the hat works for viewing everything. But then trying to find sensitivities, right? All right, and there's a lot of stuff to set up for this program. Pardon me, I'll be in the chat in just a moment. I'm still getting getting going here, but I'll, I'll be right to you. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you so much for taking any uh, time out of your day to tune in. Uh, Hans and Henning, if you're there, or Henning, if you're there, thank you. I got it loaded. Okay, I'll be ready to go here. Anyway, um, hang on a minute, and I'll be with everybody in the chat. So thank you. I want to just get through this real quick. Okay, so the uh, options up here at the top. The manual is really cool, and if you want to learn how to do all this stuff and set up your own campaigns, and it's really amazing, the complexity of what you can do with this beyond probably what we're going to do with it. I really have no interest in setting up campaigns, and there's all these toggles you can set, like have these troops go over here, and they got to, you know, it, it's really, really in-depth of the missions that you can build in campaigns and situations that you can create. You can make all hell break loose. All right. But right now, all I need to worry about is my controls. And again, the, the controls um, all set up pretty good. But now I'm looking for like keyboard sensitivities, right? Or my, my joystick controls. There's my joystick up here. And if you've got a force feedback, there's some options here for force feedback tune. I'm just looking for sensitivities. Like, where the hell are the sensitivities? Usually there's a button around here that says joystick sensitivities. So it's under Axis Tune. All right. But when you click it, it doesn't do anything. All right. So then you go up to mm, look for Axis commands. Ah, there's joystick Y, X, and rudder. So pitch, roll, and rudder. All right, if you want to find your sensitivities, then you come down here and hit Axis Tune. Okay, right off the bat, when I first did what just, I just jumped in to see if the plane would respond properly, and I noticed the controls are way sensitive. So right off the bat, I'm going to go ahead and try a little dead zone for everything out to there, and I might need a little bit more, but she was so touchy, Captain. So, so touchy. And that's it at the moment. As long as the plane uh, uh, and all my buttons are assigned right, it assigned them all properly the way I like. It read my mind. So that's the one thing it has done beautifully today. How it managed to know exactly like how I set up my buttons and everything else and just work. And well, one miracle happened today. Okay. So the options here, instant action, create fast mi mission. Mission, Campaign, Multiplayer, Logbook, Encyclopedia, Training, Replay, Mission Editor, and Campaign Builder. Now, all these down here are uh, things that you can purchase, as I understand. Different, uh, you know, types of campaigns or different planes you can get. Everything is really expensive. So, well, it depends. Some things are, planes are kind of cheap, but some of them are really expensive. I went looking for, like, the... Uh, the F-16, right, or the F-15. And to get a really good one, you know, it can be 50 to 70 bucks per plane. But you're getting a lot. Uh, but but it starts you out with the uh, SU-25 Frogfoot, which we'll get to here in a minute. Okay. The reason why I said I had to wait to get to the chat is uh, I've tried forcing this thing into 1280 by 720. That's something I better tell you right now. If you're going to OBS it, okay, 
it uh, under settings, it's if you wanted to do twelve eighty by seven twenty upscale to nineteen twenty by ten eighty, um, there is no twelve eighty by seven twenty. Somebody told me to go into the config and modify it. I did that for two seconds when it first reloaded. It held the setting I wanted, and then it blew it out again. So I can't. I haven't been able to force it into 1280 by 720. Okay, you can make it go smaller, which it should be. Uh, well, either way, you might have some. Uh, if you want to stream, you might want to go into OBS and set it to transform and set the transform moment on it to fit to screen or stretch to screen. All right, I've been looking for this one here. There's VSync. I wanted to make sure for me right now is before I go testing which graphic settings are better. Uh, I just want to avoid any tearing. Here's a full screen command and cursor confined to game window. I that one doesn't really matter. Put rain droplets on. Okay. Uh, now it's resetting itself. Okay, that gives me an opportunity to go to chat. But it was in it's in full screen mode. And that is preventing me right at the moment from seeing the chat. So now that I have a minute while it's reloading, I can come out and pop the chat out. And I can make it. Oh, that didn't work so well. I make it big, try to get it over to another screen. Let's see if I can make this bigger now. Not really. Okay, so Henny is in there. I got DCS started. Sadly, you can't fly it. That's okay. I got to do the. I got to do the the first training missions. I don't remember how to do anything. Uh, maybe tomorrow. Yeah, maybe tomorrow. The D and D got canceled again this weekend. You mean I've got the instructor rank for the SU twenty five, so you can probably help. Okay. Uh, the SU-27 is great, he says, and costs 15 euros. I don't have it yet, but I'll buy it uh, rather soon. I'm thinking I'm probably, if I do want to drop some money uh, in their DLCs, I didn't see anything more advanced than, like, the F-16s. I don't know what they've got for the United States, but uh, they've got the F-16 in there, but I'm thinking maybe F-14 or F-15. Maybe a Tomcat. So we'll see. All right, had to set up my password and uh, log in again. Uh, I've, uh, based on what the cloud data has saved on me, it seems that I've spent 56 hours in this in the past. So <laughs> I don't remember. But it says I've got 50, 56 hours in. Okay. Are we back up and running over here? Yeah. Okay. So again, it's got a lot of great features. Um, I don't want to get into the instant action. I really need to work my way back up to this. So we're going to start with the, uh, the training. So it says here for the training, and I'm not sure what this plan is, the TF-51D. Maybe we'll get to that. Aircraft startup, taxi and takeoff, basic flight controls and navigation, landing, landing, CCIP mode, unguided bombing, CCRP mode, unguided bombing, KMGU submunitions dispenser, unguided rockets, internal cannon, gun pods, while sensors with KH-29T and CAB 500KR, and laser guided missiles, Laser guided missile and mercury pod, anti radar missiles, RWR and countermeasures, air to air missiles. So, yeah, we'll start up a uh, aircraft, we'll start up taxi and takeoff. Did, uh, did anybody manage to catch the Tucker Carlson Vladimir Putin interview last night? I thought that was hella interesting. It was long. I didn't mind. It was like, oh my god, it's too long, and I and I gotta learn stuff about history. Oh my god. 
Somebody was like, I would have liked this interview uh, better if it was done by Joe Rogan. Well, that's what Putin asked right off the start. Is this going to be an actual serious interview, or is this going to be like a Joe Rogan kind of thing? Serious. Okay, well, then you're going to get the serious version. Uh, and there was a lot of things to take away from it. Everybody's like, don't believe a single thing he says. He's a Russian. Come on, how can you believe anything he has to say? And then in sharp contrast to that, our president comes on and for like 30 minutes after after that. And I thought, great, maybe he's going to do a rebuttal. All right. No, it was about, hey, I'm innocent. I'm innocent. That's He came out for 30 minutes and just said, I, I, I'm innocent of the whole classified documents thing. Uh, it, it wasn't me, see? It, 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 it was my uh, It was my aides. It was my staff. Yeah. Yeah, it was my staff. He threw his staff under the bus and then stomped on him and then stomped on him some more. I, I don't know how the classified documents got into my garage. <laughs> my staff, they just did it. Obviously, his staff has the keys to the house, and they just come and go as they please, bringing ice cream and classified documents. So they've determined he's too senile, and they won't uh, prosecute it, prosecute him. <sighs> okay, mission overview. SU-25T startup. We're starting at blah, 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 blah. Your task, nothing, flight, blah, blah, blah. Welcome to the SU-25T, Frogfoot. The Frogfoot, also called the Grach, is a very capable ground attack aircraft that can destroy most anything on the battlefield. In this lesson, we'll learn how to start up the SU-25T, taxi to the runway, and take off. Start up SU-25T, taxi to the runway, take off, key commands. Okay, so we're going to learn about... Got an, I've got a notepad here. Again, my problem was trying to find somebody that made a cool screen saver that you can move over to another monitor or something, some good graphic image that has all the keyboard uh, controls displayed for you. None of the ones I found so far were in any definition, high definition at all. When you stretched them out on the screen, you couldn't read shit. So, um... Let me just take some notes here. That's going to be... They have a lot of keyboard combinations. So you can do combos and modifiers. So, like you see for electrical power, right shift and L. Nav. Right control. And L. Canopy. Left CTRL. And C. Uh, left edge. R Alt. And Home. R-Eng, I said R-Eng last time, L-Eng and R-Eng, R-C-T-R-L, Home, I'm surprised they haven't, if they haven't come up with a, a, a I guess you can get some sort of commands added to your kneeboard, so you could pop up your kneeboard. But I'm surprised they don't have a... Hey, we have our own official download thing that you can open up on another screen which has all the keyboard commands in high definition. Okay. Flaps. Uh, the flaps are assigned to my joystick. They are working right, I believe. 
but we're going to get the, the information that they have here. Left shift F. Ruddle. Age up. Throttle down, page down. Rudder left Z, rudder right X. Sorry, this is so boring, but and gear standard g in most flight simulators okay so known threats threat no known threats we're just to take off and take off and landing okay welcome to the su-25t frogfoot the frogfoot also called the gratch is a very capable ground attack aircraft that can destroy most anything on the battlefield before we start blowing things up though let's first learn how to start up this bird yeah, but if I don't write them down, yeah, he's going to teach me as I go through them, but that doesn't mean I'm going to memorize them. Come on, man. I'm I'm getting old. My brain doesn't work like it used to, and I smoke. <laughs> You've got to realize you're dealing with the dummy here, and it's going to go in one ear and write out the other, and if I don't have it written down, I'm done. So. And taxi to the runway. The first thing I'll ask you to do is turn on the electrical power by pressing right shift and L. With the electrical power now engaged, you can see that the heads-up display, or HUD, comes to life, as well as many instruments and cockpit lights. Before moving the aircraft, make sure that more than three minutes have elapsed in order to let the horizontal situation indicator gyro to align properly. Now that we have power, let's turn on the navigation lights by pressing right, control, and L. Next, let's close the canopy by pressing left, control, and C. A. Oh, left. Our next step is to start our... The other left. Before you do so, make sure your throttle controller has a zero power setting. Start the left engine by pressing right, alt, and home. Oh, you... So this is the one that you have the P-51 in? And you're saying the, the the training is long? I'll bet. How cool, though, man. How cool. All right, what did he want? Is there a replay? What did he want? Oh, shit. <laughs> How do you bring back up the instruction of what he just said? What I mean, in one ear and out the, out the next? What did he want? Don't press Q. Come on, really? There's got to be a way to bring back up the uh, the chat. Movie. Okay, this is getting silly now. <laughs> no, I don't want those. Gads. All right. Um, now I'm officially stupid. That's what I get for uh, not paying attention. So now I should probably find out what the damn keyboard command is to bring back up the instructions. They actually expect us to pay attention. What kind of game is this?
Welcome to the SU-25T Frogfoot. The Frogfoot, also called the Gratch, is a very capable ground attack aircraft that can destroy most anything on the battlefield. Before we start blowing things up, though, oh, let's press. Find how to start up this uh, and taxi to the. I just had to press escape. Yeah. The first thing I'll ask you to do is turn on the electrical power by pressing right shift and L. With the electrical power now engaged, you can see that the heads up display, or HUD, comes to life, as well as many instruments and cockpit lights. Before moving the aircraft, make sure that more than three minutes have elapsed in order to let the horizontal situation indicator gyro to align properly. Gyro. Now that we have power, let's turn on the navigation lights by pressing right control and L. Next, let's close the canopy by pressing left, control, and C. Our next step is to start our two engines. Before ah. you do so, make sure your throttle controller has a zero power setting. Right. Start the left engine by pressing right, alt, and home. With the left engine started, press right, control, and home to start the right engine. Off the lower left corner of the TV display is the engine gauge, with needles marked 1 and 2 for the two engines. When an engine is being started, one of the two green lights below the gauge will light. Once the light turns off, it indicates that the engine is ready for operation. In the lower left corner of the dash is an aircraft symbol that indicates the status of your flaps, landing gear, and air brake. Lower your flaps to the takeoff position by pressing left shift and F. Everything's in Russian. See where the flap control is? Uh huh. Well, it's showing me. Left shift and F. We're now ready to taxi, so slowly increase the throttles. I see. Your throttle control forward or pressing page up. To reduce throttle, use your throttle controller or press page down. To use the wheel brakes, press W. Start rolling forward and turn to the left of the taxiway ahead. Press Z to steer left and press X to steer right. Okay. Welcome to the live stream. Yeah, you're like, what is this? Sky dude. Henny has talked me into loading DCS World, the uh, combat simulator. He wants me to unleash my dark side. Yeah, you know, he wants to blow me out of the sky. Let's let's get serious here. <laughs> What's this all about? About shooting each other down, man. So I'm gonna have to work out some things graphically because we're getting some just you know just on taxi could be it simulating the the gravel, but it just doesn't feel that smooth. So might have to tweak some things. Get everything running fluidly. You uh, and then you can message history. Okay. Brakes, 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 W. Okay. You said all you gotta do is press escape and do message history. Okay, so he wanted us to turn. Increase the throttle, moving throttle, control forward, blah, blah, blah. Start rolling forward, turn to the left on the taxiway ahead. Press Z to steer left and press X to steer right.
No, it's not resuming. Oh. All right. Is the training going to advance? What's going on? Yeah. All right, I don't know what he wants. Maybe they wanted me to do the page up, page down. I did everything he wanted. I did page up, page down. Did the left, did the right. Ooh, what does he want? You know what I did wrong? Ah, uh, I know what I did wrong. Started at. Doesn't like the grass at all. God, man, we're getting our kidneys bounced out of us. Yeah, huh? Whatever. Nice job. We're now heading in the right direction. Keep your taxi speed around 10 kilometers per hour. As you taxi, where are you going to bounce your kidneys out? Corrections to keep you aligned on the center of the taxiway. At the fork, hang a right to reach the runway. As we taxi, you can go to external view by pressing F2 and return to the cockpit by pressing F1. You can zoom in and out using the keypad star and forward slash keys. Rotate the views using the keypad directional keys. Okay, why are you beeping? Ba -da -dum -ba -ba. F2, F1, zoom in and out, rotate your view by using uh, the keypad, directional keys. Okay. Why are you beeping? Okay. What do you want, man?
my goodness. I don't know. Don't know, I don't know. Um. <clears throat> Now reach the runway threshold. Taxi on the runway to the right and align yourself down the length of it. Once aligned down the runway, increase thrust of both engines to maximum and use gentle inputs on the rudder, X and Z, to keep you tracking down the center line. speed as indicated in the top left corner of the HUD indicates about well, 250 kilometers per hour gently pull back well, the controller and allow the aircraft to fall okay well that sucks <laughs> unbelievable I didn't line up right at the start and I thought okay well I'll get going and it didn't like the rudder command and I forgot oh yeah you got to use the nose wheel There an ejection. We've recovered his DNA, sir. Oh, holy crap. Okay. Let's go back. All you can do is laugh. Mm. Hilarious. The 41 minutes half the hour. Time flies. My gosh. <laughs> there is an ejection, uh, but your pilot was dead already. Mm hmm. For sure. Okay. So some other controls that we need to pay attention to. Uh, cockpit lights, L, that's standard. The air brake, I've got that set on the joystick. But it is B, keyboard, got rudders, got the trim, but they want Okay. We trim up. Up. Uh, down. Right control and period. Right control and semicolon.
Altitude hold. Good one. Definitely will be needing that. Left alt and one or H. Alt and roll hold. That is going to be left alt and two. Level. L alt three Barrow hold L alt four Okay. Radar alt, radar hold. Alt five. And route follow, good one. And alt six or A. Okay. Welcome to this lesson on the basic flying and navigation of the SU-25T. This lesson will teach you how to get from point A to point Z and all points in between. I currently have the lesson in active pause. If you wish, you can turn on cockpit lighting by pressing L. Your airspeed is indicated at the top left corner of the HUD. The horizontal line below the airspeed indication with the carrot below it indicates your acceleration or deacceleration. If the carrier is on the left side of the line, you are deaccelerating. If it is in the center, your speed is not changing. And if it is on the right side of the line, you are accelerating. The smaller number above is your set airspeed for that leg of the route when you're in navigation mode. Press the space bar to continue. Heading in the chat room is saying the worst thing you can do is overspeed. When you overspeed a plane like this, you lose all control, he says. Or, yeah, so just avoid be careful about overspeeding okay let's let's go through that again real quick the airspeed is indicated at the top left hor corner of the hut horizontal blind uh, below the airspeed indication carrot below indicates your acceleration or deceleration the carrot is on the left side of the line, you're decelerating. If it's on the center, your speed is not changing. And if it's on the right side, you're accelerating. Press the space bar to continue. Okay. So he's referring to, I guess, that carrot. It's so weird. Microsoft Flight Simulator, I'm, I'm used to having an option to, and maybe there is for this too, but it doesn't seem like you press anything in here. But in Microsoft, you can click something and you get a little pointer, a mouse pointer. And I can't bring up, I don't know how to bring up a mouse pointer at the moment, but I'm trying to look at the upper left corner and I see the triangle under the bar. And at the moment it's just in the center. So that would mean we're not changing speed. And um, that indicates acceleration and deceleration. I thought he said hit the space bar to continue. Eesh. Yeah, press space bar to continue. Okay. But not a nada. Tap and tap in the space bar. There we go. You got to hit resume and then. Altitude in meters is indicated in the top right corner of your HUD. An R to the right indicates it is radar altitude or height above ground and not barometric height above sea level altitude. Okay, this is Russian. He says R, but it's a P. 
And he says a lot of things like on the weapon systems, he'll go through and he's like, this is the CS, da 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 and it's got all this Russian Cyrillic stuff. Um, that's one of the things. You're like, well, I'm looking for the R, man. Where's the R? I see a P. Do I have the right thing up? So be aware of that. The small number above is your desired barometric altitude for that leg of the route. 670. Space bar to continue. You probably notice a circle in the center of the HUD. This I do. Core steering to the next waypoint by flying the aircraft to align the circle in the center of the bank and pitch indicator in the center of the HUD. You will reach your next destination on the course line. The course line is the direct line between two waypoints. Press the space bar to continue. In the bottom center of your front dash is a horizontal situation indicator or HSI that looks like a compass. The yellow needle points directly to your next waypoint, and the top left field indicates the range of kilometers to that waypoint. The top right field indicates your course bearing to reach the next waypoint. The double white needles points to your course intercept. When you're on course to the next waypoint, both the yellow and white needles will align. Press the space bar to continue. Ahead of you are a series of gates to fly through. Fly through the first gate directly ahead of you. You can push the control stick forward to push the nose down and dive, or pull back the stick to raise the nose and climb. These inputs control your elevator. Use the throttle, or page up and page down, control your thrust. Try to keep your airspeed around 620 kilometers per hour. Press the space bar when you're ready, and I will unpause the lesson. Note that when you pass through a gate, the next one's sequence will become larger if it's rather far away. If you get too fast, reduce the throttle and toggle your air brakes by pressing B. The next gate is above you and to the left. To change your heading, use your aircraft's ailerons to roll the aircraft to the left by moving your control stick to the left and then gently pulling back on the stick until you are aligned with the next gate. Are we in Azerbaijan? That mountain range looks familiar. To the right. This time, roll the aircraft to the right and lower your nose to fly through the gates. So my wife watches all these videos of this lady that lives on a farm and she cooks all this cool stuff in Azerbaijan, and I swear that's the same mountain range that you always see in the videos. I'll have to look that up. Find out where this is at. Fly through the next gate directly ahead. As you go faster, your nose will want to rise, and as you go slower, the nose will want to fall. To keep your nose level, try using the trim. To trim the nose up, press right control and period. To trim the nose down, press right control and semicolon. through the gates ahead. As mentioned in the previous lesson, you can also move your nose side to side using the rudder called yaw. Yaw left by pressing yaw. Yaw. Right by pressing X.
Yeah, might make, have to make some more sensitivity adjustments. The dead zone feels right. In the lower center of the HUD, you can see the range indication to the next waypoint. right portion of the HUD is the next waypoint number, in this case, 15. Hi, Captain. The rim works really nice. It's uh, very responsive. I like that. What was the pitch hold? left uh, I think it's probably that one and he hasn't uh, at the moment he hasn't gone over that one with us you have several autopilot modes that can here we go useful here we go flights these include altitude hold left alt and one altitude and roll hold left alt and two level flight left alt and three parametric altitude hold left alt and four radar altitude hold left alt and five Route follow, left alt and six. You can also toggle route follow mode by pressing A and altitude hold by pressing H. Let's try route follow mode that will automatically fly our flight plan. Press left alt and six. Good, the aircraft is now under autopilot control. This concludes this lesson. You can practice using some of the autopilot modes listed below, or you can end the lesson now by pressing escape key. Okay. So let's do an uh, altitude hold, left alt and one. So it's already doing the route. You toggle one off. So how would you toggle route follow off? You do it again, left alt and six. But once it, yeah, once it's on, how do you toggle it off? Yep, yeehaw. All right, so let me do a altitude roll and hold left, alt, and two. There's a roll and a turn, left, alt, and two. Level, left alt and three. Barometric hold, left alt and four. Radar hold, left alt and five. Now, radar should, if I understand correctly, it should adjust to the terrain. Could be wrong on that. But as I understand, it'll, you know, it's going to try to keep you at the radar hold altitude above the ground. All right, so you will see it making adjustments right now. Yeah, because we're coming over a hill. Now it's going to come down and adjust to whatever, 400, 500 feet, 800 feet. I will, let's see what it does here. What it holds at. So four four six. So there's got to be a way then again, w which I'm sure we'll learn here in a minute, like how to change your out your radar. So I wanted to say, let's say I wanted to do five hundred. You know, where do you change it? Out to so we'll we'll figure that out. Okay, route follow again of control. Six. That's going to try to get back to route number 20 or start at the 20 waypoint. And we haven't learned how to cycle waypoints yet, too. So, for whatever reason, you can't do something linearly. You got to go from route 1 to 5 to 4 to 8. There is a way to cycle through your routes. But I don't remember at the moment. So, let's pull that up.
That's the wrong one. Okay. So the first one I wanted was radar. An out, like an out hold increase. Radar altitude hold. Radar, zoom in, zoom out. So that has that. I guess not. Okay, let's do a barrel hold. Parametric altitude hold, and but it doesn't say anything about changing it. Route. Route follow. Hmm. Not what I wanted. Next waypoint, air filter target, control plus. Previous waypoint, let me get that jotted down here. See if that works. L control plus. L shift plus. We'll try that. Left control plus. Shift plus. Uh oh, still doing his thing. Uh, left control plus. Nope. Nope. That's not changing that at all. No, oh, the plus just means and. Landing VFR, landing IFR. Nice. Cheers, if you'd like to uh, join in, make sure that we have your name in the chat room. Please like and subscribe. You own DCS World and you want to do some pew pew with us at some point. Yeah, hop in and let us let us get to know you. In this lesson, we're gonna learn how to navigate to an airfield and land on it. Alright. Three navigation modes that we'll be using. This is what I wanted. Return to base and landing. These sub modes are selected automatically at the appropriate points along the signed flight path but they can also be cycled manually. In this lesson, we'll use the automatic method. I currently have the lesson paused as I explain some of the finer points. Press the space bar to continue. What we'll learn in this lesson is how to navigate to a waypoint using in route mode, switch to return mode automatically, and then switch to landing mode automatically. We're currently in route mode as indicated in the bottom left corner of the HUD. This mode allows us to fly from waypoint to waypoint in sequence automatically, as we did in the prior navigation lesson. However, in this lesson, we'll try manual selection. Our current waypoint is zero, our starting point, as indicated in the bottom right corner of the HUD with a range of zero. Press left control and tilde to manually select waypoint one. Okay. Of control and until they. Good. You will now see that waypoint one is <clears throat> a range of 8.6 kilometers. Press left control and tilde again to select waypoint two. You 
can see that waypoint two is 15.5 kilometers from us. I do. As we learned in the prior lesson, we can see the direct heading of the waypoint is indicated by the yellow arrow on the HSI. <coughs> the and white arrows indicate our path to fly the course line. Directly above the HSI is the attitude director indicator, or ADI. This is a sphere with one hemisphere white and one hemisphere black. In the center of the ADI is a white aircraft symbol. This aircraft symbol stays stationary in pitch, but will rotate as you maneuver and roll. The ADI ball will move in pitch in relation to the aircraft symbol. When the aircraft symbol center is over black, your nose is below the horizon. If the aircraft symbol center is over white, your nose is pointing above the horizon. Press the space bar to continue. In the center of the ADI are two yellow lines that help assist you reach the waypoint via the course line. The course line is a direct line between two waypoints. The vertical line indicates your required azimuth steering to reach and maintain the course line. When the yellow vertical line is centered on the ADI, you are flying on or to the course line. If the vertical line is off to either side, put your stick in that direction until the vertical line centers on the ADI and adjust your roll to keep it centered. The yellow horizontal line indicates your elevation course steering. When centered on the ADI, you are flying at or to the set course altitude for that waypoint. If the yellow line is on the lower half of the ADI, push the stick forward until the yellow horizontal line centers on the ADI and adjust pitch to keep it centered. Conversely, if the yellow horizontal line is above the center line of the ADI, pull back on the stick until the line centers. Along the top and left side of the ADI are your heading and elevation deviation scales. The more the lines are from center, the greater you are off the direct path to reach the waypoint. Let's practice this as we fly to waypoint two. I'll unpause the lesson when you press the space bar. There's gotta be a way to get up. There's gotta be a way to get a better high detailed cockpit. Gotta, not real happy with that, are you? I'm not. Something to work on. All right. You will first need to intercept the course line between waypoints one and two. Note that the ADI steering bars in the HUD navigation circle provide us the same information. Fly the aircraft to center the ADI steering bars by adjusting the pitch and roll to keep the bars centered on the ADI. Or you can fly to keep the navigation circle on the HUD in the very center of the pitch and bank indicator. The choice is yours. Also remember that the assigned airspeed and altitude for the waypoint are indicated as smaller digits above your current airspeed and altitude. Fly to waypoint two. Well, are we supposed to be down? I don't know if I'm supposed to climb or go down based on the horizontal one. Notice the waypoint automatically cycles to waypoint three. I did. Go ahead and fly to waypoint three along the course line. And maintain a speed of around 400 kilometers per hour.
Alt 6. So it was saying dive. So it seems, I don't know what it's doing, if it's gonna go into the ground or not, if it's gonna pull up. There it goes. Now that you reached the last in route waypoint, notice the return mode has automatically been selected as indicated as RTN in the lower left corner of the HUD. Your navigation steering will now provide you steering to intercept the instrumented landing system beams at the proper heading and altitude. The airfield return number, in this case Mazdoc, is displayed in the lower right corner of the HUD as number 17. Fly the assigned return navigation. We've now entered the ILS beams and have automatically switched to the landing oh, nice. indicated by the LNDG indication in the bottom left corner of the HUD. The ILS contains a glide slope beam to help guide you vertically and a localizer beam helps you to guide horizontally. Below the landing indication is a K indication that lets you know that you have captured the ILS beams. The upside down L in the lower left side of the HUD indicates that you are on glide slope. If you have not already done so, reduce your airspeed to less than 400 kilometers per hour and lower your landing gear by pressing G. If you need to, deploy your air brakes by pressing B. Lower your landing flaps by pressing left shift and F. Press the space bar to continue. A lot of shit to do, ma'am. Gear, are a large flaps, circle. speed, large is your direct brakes. Circle. As in other modes, fly the aircraft to center of the circle inside the pitch and roll indicator in the center of the HUD. The smaller circle is your glide slope error circle. Like the director circle, you want to center this in the pitch and roll indicator. If the director circle is above the roll and pitch indicator, you are too high. And conversely, if it is below the roll and pitch indicator. If the director circle is left of the center and pitch and roll indicator, it means you are left of the localizer beam. And conversely, if it is right of the roll and pitch indicator. Once on glide slope, use pitch to control your airspeed and throttle to control your altitude. Just past the outer marker beacon, and your airspeed should be between 290 and 310 kilometers per hour and on glide slope. 90. Lord Almighty. You have now passed the inner marker beacon, and your airspeed should be between 250 and 270 kilometers per hour. You just passed the runway threshold. When the radar altimeter indicates 5 meters, reduce the throttle idle and flare the nose such that the sink rate, as indicated on the right side of the HUD, is between 1 and 2 meters per second. Once all the wheels are on the ground and your speed is below 250 kilometers per hour, release the braking chute by pressing P. Hold down the W key to apply the wheel brakes until the aircraft comes to a complete stop. Did the gear not deploy? Yeah, the gear, gear's down. Right? Looks like you got it down. The, the ground crew is no. with you, given the work you just made for them. You can end the lesson now by pressing escape key. So, it doesn't seem like the gear deployed at all there. Yeah, I'm on fire. I'm going to blow up again. So, the chute is P. Um, be careful. I hit the... Uh, G key and uh, and in the cockpit this is in a down position as I press G I don't seem to be hitting anything ah 
still way too fast. I'm trying to figure out the HUD on the speed there. So an IFR landing, instrument flight rules. Nav mode, cycle one, nav mode cycle. Next waypoint, we got that. Cockpit lights, got that. Landing gear G, got that. Air brakes, got that. Landing flaps, got that. Rudder, got that. Wheel brake, got that. Ooh. In the past two lessons, we learned the basics of navigation and landing under ideal conditions. In this lesson, we're going to... I can't see anything. ...by finding an airfield and landing on it at night during a thunderstorm. Sounds fun, huh? Bye. By pressing L. Graphics are dark. Way dark. We're currently in route mode, but we have no airfield at the final route destination. So let's select return mode by pressing 1. As I mentioned in the last lesson, the airfield identification number is displayed in the lower right corner of the HUD. 21 is the ID code for Beslan Airfield, the smallest runway I could find in the game just for you. If you want to get return steering to a different airfield, you can press left control and tilde until you select the airfield you want. A complete list of airfield ID numbers is located in the back of the SU-25T flight manual. For now, let's keep it on 21. Press the space bar to continue. One second. It's so dark, and then it's, my room is so light that I can't see anything. I'm going to try to adjust some things so I have a little bit darker environment. One moment, please. About the best I can do. I got light coming in from behind me too. It's not ideal. Using what you learned about course steering through the HUD and ADI, fly the assigned return course that will lead you to the ILS intercept for Beslan Airfield. As you start to descend, you'll probably pick up a lot of speed. Don't forget that you can deploy the air brakes by pressing B. There's 299. Let's hit Alt 6 to um, route follow. Ah, saying going too fast to can, uh, if you go too fast, your landing gear won't deploy properly. Thirty-five miles. 
میرم اون رو Barometric hold and radar hold was left alt five. Can't tell if that's rain or not. Sounds like rain. Oh yeah, he said stormy weather. Twenty six miles. Twenty nine miles, what? There we go, 28. Very much cold. Four. As we get closer to the airfield, I should also mention that not all airfields have Russian ILS, as we had in the last lesson. Airfields that do include Mozdok, Krimsk, Mykop, and Krasnodar Center. Being that Bezlan does not have this, you will not have the HUD ILS indications. However, if you look down your HSI, you will notice a dashed cross in the center in both solid vertical and horizontal lines. The dashed lines are fixed and represent the optimal glide slope and localizer positions with the solid lines. Press the space bar to continue. That's your HSI. On the dashed cross center, both solid vertical and horizontal. Down here. Glide slope and localizer position. So that would be that the that we are right. I would think. Oh well. Keep going. Glide slope bars below the dash line, you are above glide slope. If it is above the dash line, you are under glide slope. If the localizer line is left to center, you need to fly to the left. If the localizer is to the right of center, you need to fly to the right. You always fly to the needle. What is it doing? Oh, now we're gonna. I can't tell if we're gonna crash or not. Yeah. Press escape to end the lesson. I don't know what did. I had it on route. <laughs> we'll try that again. We have to back out all the way or what? Or uh, let's see what's going on here. Come on. Oh, it restarts it, but it doesn't restart the thing. Good of.
Uh, let's go back out and come back in. Here we go. Gads. I thought that may have been, but you move so damn fast. It's like 29 miles, and all of a sudden it's 5 miles, and... Brian? Two lessons. We learned the basics of navigation and landing under ideal conditions. In this lesson, we're going to put what you learned to the test by finding an airfield and landing on it at night during a thunderstorm. Yeah. Sounds fun, huh? Yeah. Let's turn on the cockpit lighting by pressing L. We have no airfield at the final route destination, so let's select return mode by pressing 1. As I mentioned in the last lesson, the airfield identification mode is displayed in the lower right corner of the HUD. 21 is the ID code for Beslan Airfield, the smallest runway I can find in the game just for you. If you want to get return steering to a different airfield, you can press left control and tilde until you select the airfield you want. A complete list of airfield ID numbers is located in the back of the SU-25T flight manual. For now, let's keep it on 21. Press the space bar to continue. Okay, I'm looking at the HSI, and looking at the HSI, if I'm understanding this right, this is the runway, it's, again, I got no pointer, but like the runway alignment, then it tells you the direction to go to, which would be to the left, and then it says we're high, so we'll have to go down, but the ground is really close. <clears throat> Using what you learned about course steering through the HUD and ADI, fly the assigned return course that will lead you to the ILS intercept for Beslan Airfield. So that, again, so start to descend, that would be left. A lot of speed. Don't forget that you can deploy the air brakes by pressing B. See the ground at all. Air speed down. So to intercept, it should be a hard left. That's a little bit better. I can kind of see out there a little bit of light. But I would think they were supposed to go to the left and then make a hard turn on course, but I haven't got the needle. All right, the needle's moving in, I think. This heading. Yeah. I don't know if that's a mountain or what. It's not. It's not a little bit. Okay, so we're going 10 degrees. 
needle. Okay. Okay. Mean. What does that mean? What? 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 That's West. Well, close enough. <clears throat> so what I'm trying to do is establish West, and I want to see if the HSI needle... ...can move in and I can get the HSI needle centered up. That, that's all I'm trying to do at the moment, and I'm failing miserably. Or this is, you know, I've got to reverse my thinking, I guess. I, I'm not entirely sure yet. <clears throat> well, you know, I see that the, the runway is supposed to be I mean, easy, easy. I'll just, I guess, do that first. Let me go ahead and try to get closer to the landing field. So on the HSI at the bottom, now I'm not now I'm ignoring the left solid bar and I'm just going to try to align with that. What I believe is to be the direction of the runway itself. So 45 miles. Level is what? Level is all three.
roll hold alt two. How do you disengage autopilot? There we go. Try that. With the Alt-C, you can turn on and off your cursor. Is any? There we go, yeah, yeah. Oh, God, damn it. Plane is all over the place. How, how am I speeding up so much? Well, that's how I'm speeding up so much. Oh, shit. With that, we need a smoke break. Yeah, it'll all become fun once we get to the pew pew, as Henning says. Yeah, and it will. Uh, it just sucks that I'm messing up so bad on these. Let me Maybe I have to adjust my monitor a little bit more. I honestly can't see a thing. I can't tell what, you know. I'm trying to use the instruments, and but I wasn't paying attention there. And I should be able to fly this blind. So, again, it's my own fault. Got to be able to fly blind, but it, it's, I haven't done any night flying in a while. And it would help a little bit if I could just, I guess I shouldn't complain. Because when you're flying airliners, it's the same, or any night flying, sometimes you can't see anything. You just can't. So I guess I should stop trying, you know, stop freaking out about it. I know that there's night vision goggles, right? I think, uh, in the past two lessons, see if we can cheat. <laughs> well, that's just for your sensors. Night vision flare. Right control zero. I think that's just for your... So we learned the basics of navigation and landing under ideal conditions. In this lesson, we're going to put what you learned to the test by finding an airfield and landing on it at night during a thunderstorm. Sounds fun, huh? Mm -mm. Let's turn on the cockpit lighting by pressing L. in route mode, we have no airfield at the final route destination. So let's select return mode by pressing 1. As I mentioned in the last lesson, the airfield identification number is displayed in the lower right corner of the HUD. 21 is the ID code for Beslan Airfield, the smallest runway I could find in the game just for you. If you want to get return steering to a different airfield, you can press left control and tilde until you select the airfield you want. A complete list of airfield ID numbers is located in the back of the SU-25T flight manual. For now, let's keep it on 21. Press the space bar to continue. Using what you learned about course steering through the HUD and ADI, Fly the assigned return course that will lead you to the ILS intercept for Beslan Airfield. As you start to descend, you'll probably pick up a lot of speed. 
don't forget that you can deploy the air brakes by pressing B. thousand six hundred feet Seven. thousand Closer to the airfield, I should also mention that not all airfields have Russian ILS, as we had in the last lesson. Airfields that do include Mozdok, Krimsk, Mykop, and Krasnodar Center. Being that Beslan does not have this, you will not have the HUD ILS indications. However, if you look down your HSI, you will notice a dashed cross in the center in both solid vertical and horizontal lines. The dash lines are fixed and represent the optimal glide slope and localizer positions for the solid lines. Press the space bar to continue. If the glide slope bar is below the dash line, you are above glide slope. If it is above the dash line, you are under glide slope. If the localizer line is left of center, you need to fly to the left. If the localizer is to the right of center, you need to fly to the right. You always fly to the needle. I see, they take a second to turn on and off. One four and on heading, I guess.
Hmm. Just fly to the needle, and I'm flying to the needle. But now it's the glide, so or seems like it's the localizer and the inverse. Slow. A slow turner. Get it. Son of a gun. I'm going away from it. I'll be damned.
instead of watching my needles, see what he said in the, one of the first lessons, follow the circle. See what we get. My brain is not latching on to my HSI properly. Because right now, it would indicate the runway is behind us, but that's not what we're getting at all. It says we just passed it. Son of a bitch. Pardon my language. But I, I'm... Got to get my brain around it. Sorry, my friends. Well, if that is it, not crashing to the mountain. The needle's saying, yeah, but we don't want the needle. We don't want to be on the runway. We want it to be to it. Well, that, then that's not it. My God. Yeah. Uh,
Okay, well, the needle is centered there. Okay, we found it. Now let me get my head around the needles. We're coming in it. Ha 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 ha. Okay, at least we're going parallel with it now. So at either side, I still haven't seen my HSI needles do much of anything. Alright, if we turn here, we should be able to, let's see if the localizer needle lines up then. Because we should be crossing it. There, see? On our left shoulder. Right shoulder. Runway. But our bottom horizontal needles aren't moving. Okay, well, we haven't actually crossed it yet. Okay, we've crossed it. Son of a bitch. Mission failure. Couldn't maintain enough 
That's enough speed with the air brakes on. Holy crap. But uh, honestly, unless I've got something toggled wrong, okay, I'm following. Okay, I'm trying. What I'm trying to do is line up with the localizer needle. I've done plenty of ILS landings. So what you're trying to do is get on the localizer and then fly the HSI down to the runway. Simple as that, right? Sounds simple. But in this, at the moment, maybe I'm not doing something right. Maybe I'm missing something. Okay. But I never, as we crossed the localizer, I never saw a change in the HSI. We are in NOC or ILS approach mode on the HUD, so that is right. Hey, I appreciate the encouragement. I really do. Thank you so much, Henning, man. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll I'll get this. Once I get it, I'll get it. Once I got it, I got it. You know. Doing being able to do an ILS landing is so vital, folks. I mean it so on the other ones I've just passed because yeah, I can do that. I'll eventually yeah, landings, okay, sure, sure, sure. But this this is where you really can't skimp, in my opinion. You you you've gotta make sure that you can do this. And I hope you have one of those brains that's like, dude, this is so simple. Why are you making it so hard? I've done it like 30 times already. So cheers. I hope uh, you're one of those people. All right. We're at the 3 o'clock hour. Yeah, I really was hoping to get some PP. And I'll, okay, I'll push this live stream a bit long then. I've, I've done all this in the past. I mean, I've I've done it. I had my head brain working with this at one point. But I, it was so long ago. You know, we're talking possibly five years or more. So I was all about when I was in this game, I didn't actually... It's like, you know me, man. I'll spend days on just training and won't worry about shooting anything so at that point being able to do an ILS landing is so important and I, I, I you know I just stuck to working with the autopilot controls for a long time anyway we will do it again but let's take a little bit of break if anybody wants to take a break uh, yeah, I'm probably going to be open tomorrow. Uh, if I go back to the main menu or go into instant stuff, can we do the chat thing? Are you... Um, I don't have to do this. Let me cancel out of here. So if I were to just do an instant action, or we... Got, actually, we have multiplayer here. That's what we should have done first. And But we'll do it now. Okay. So multiplayer, I see the IP up at the top. Servers and players. Password protection, any. You know, you, you must know how to do this because you and Hans fly together. And I feel really bad now in thinking about doing this stream that I probably should have just glossed over some things and not jumped into the mission and probably jumped in to learn how to set this up first. But my apologies for wasting your time for the last several hours. Well, what I'd like to do is learn how to set it up with you. So, whether we're fighting or not, just how do I get us together? All right, so we probably can't do 
any multiplayer server because you have to synchronize your router with the game or something, but a good server, 289th training for all. Can't I just set one up? Uh, and then you join it? And then there's connect by IP. You only match. Integrity check. Fresh connect by IP. No, I don't want that. But you said that the server is the two. Over again. Two eighty ninth. Well, I don't really want, again, I don't really want to join into somebody's server. Should I have the manual open? Player. Oh. New server. Okay, so if I go to the 289th, I don't even see it, 289 in here, new server, server name, oh, no, Oop. I hit enter, accident there, what did I do? <laughs> Give it a second, see if it does something. No, did I crash the thing? What's going on? Are you sure you want to quit? I guess so. We'll restart this thing. Sorry, I don't know. Since it's already running. It's not already running. Maybe it was still just shutting down. Two hundred and eighty ninth. I guess I'll have to try to see when we get back in there if I can search that out and try to find that one. Should be coming back any second on the screen. server twenty ninth training for all the server can take screenshots from you you want to connect yeah 
I don't know what that means. It can take screenshots from you, so it can pull up my screen. All right, well, it's doing something. It says mission load done, but it hasn't. Uh... So it's holding right there. So while it uh, is doing its thing, uh, I am going to take smoke break and play the song. That I played, uh, that I opened with. Today's Brad Sucks song is Bad Attraction. I love this one so much. He just belts it out. And sometimes in the in his live streams when he's doing the live performance, like he holds back. Like he's saying, "Stop it! You got to do what you did in the in on the album. You've got to really just, hey man, open up the pipes and just belt it and be unrelenting. Rock, man, rock. Because uh, anyway, you know." As certain artists get older, maybe they can't do it, blow their vocal cords out or whatever. But uh, so powerful. All right, still waiting. Still waiting, still waiting. Don't get me wrong. Nope, that's not the one we want. I can tell by your middle finger that you're warming up to me. Yeah. Strap yourselves in. Here he comes. Uh, yeah. Here he goes. Hold on.
Oh. Red Sox, bad attraction. If you're not signed up, subscribed over there, please do so. If you like that, if you like everything I've been playing from Brad, tell him Kenny has sent you. He'll know. Honest, he will. Honest, honest. And if you like his music so much and you want to feature it in your own streams, then talk to Brad. Literally contact him and say, hey man, I'm a I'm a friend of Kinius. And uh he just plays the hell out of your music. And I'd really like to occasionally feature some of your music in my live stream or my videos. Uh and would that be okay with you? And he'll probably say, Yeah, Kinius is a pretty righteous dude sometimes. And um what I like about working with Kinius is when uh, I get a pop-up that says Kinius is using one of my tunes, like today, Bad Attraction, and I have an option to select Share, and that allows me to share any monetization with Brad on these live streams. So anytime I'm playing music, I'm I'm sharing my revenue. That's why I'm complaining, like, man, I'm making six bucks. I don't have a whole lot of... I don't have a whole lot of followers and I don't have a whole lot of viewers and all my videos combined I make it about six bucks but you see that I spent most of it just because I want music I don't care and I'm more than happy to uh, make Brad even richer than he is maybe he'll return the favor someday and help me get another computer or something uh, but either way he's really cool super cool and and uh, from everything I've played, he can, uh, he has, you know, does such a wide variety of sounding music. Anyway, yeah, I'm sure he wouldn't mind allowing you in. He'll get that option and he'll know you and he'll say, share. Get a cut, he gets a cut. All right. So let me look over here to the chat room again now that we're back and see what we see. Perfect. Now you can scroll down by the red team. And at the very bottom, there's a two dog fight spawn. You can click that. The Red Coalition. Man. Z dog fight spawn. Z Dragger S U twenty five. There's one player. On S U twenty five. I can't select anything. I'm clicking on different ones. These are highlighted already. Uh, or maybe I'm... Um, I, again, I am clicking on these things and right clicking and left clicking. Go put us back to spectators.
That one allows me to highlight it. It was highlighted. Z Dog Red SU twenty five T. So SU twenty five T. And then briefing. Thank you. All right, so now we know how to connect. Okay, that's waypoint one. All six to waypoint one. Control until day zero one zero one. Pontiac two one, Dark Star one one, Bra two nine four four five hundred at eight thousand cold. Now I don't know how to decipher any of that yet either up at the top there that's like an atis 198 to one let's go back to zero wait now that's waypoint 14 15 16 17 18 15, 20 21 one is 684 13 639 and incrementing higher and higher two eight Hello. Are you streaming? Yep. All right. Go with me to the or my. I... No. Okay. Well, I'll call you when I leave. All right. Sounds great. All right. Bye. Bye bye. Okay. Waypoint 13 is 198. All told, all told, a lot of one, all one. Pontiac two one, Dark Star one one, Bra two nine six four five hundred. Bra. Cold. Okay. Waypoints don't matter. The dogfight zone is indicated by the little towers you see there all the time. Yeah, but oh, I see. Yeah, there's a there's red towers there. Well, how would if if I'm lost somewhere? How in the heck would you find me? I'm over the red zone. Uh, I'm over the red towers at waypoint thirteen. Right? No. How do you know which waypoint you're right over? You have to know the map. Mirrors. Oh, 
I am Pontiac too. Next is how do you bring up chat? There's tab. Go the manual. Pontiac two one dark star one one bra two nine four four five hundred at three thousand gold. Okay. So Pontiac 2, I don't know what Dark Star 1 1 or Bra, Barometric at 2229. Oh well. Pontiac 2 1, Dark Star 1 1, Bra 295 4 600 at 8000 cold. Trying to figure what toggles off autopilot. Right control A. Nope. Pontiac 2 1, Dark Star 1 1, Bra 295 4 600 at 6000 hot. Hot. Pontiac 2 1, Dark Star 1 1, Bra 296 4 500 at 5000 hot. 296. He's over here. And he's up at five. Five thousand. Over 310. Pontiac 2 1, Dark Star 1 1, Bra 2 
Output eight. Climbing higher. Pontiac two one. Dark star one one. Bra two nine seven four five hundred at eight thousand knots. Star one one bra three zero one four five hundred at eight thousand cold. Honey, 
Dark Star, 1 1, pop up group, 314 4 300 at 0, cold. All right, well, cool. So we now know how to at least get to the server and we'll be able to do this some more uh, when Henning has some time to fly and we can, uh, but now I know how. So now we know how to, I know how to connect to their server. Pontiac 2-1, Dark Star 1-1, pop-up group 313-4300 at zero, cold. Okay. So we still had training to do. We're going to have to get that ILS. What time is it now? Okay. I better wrap it up here. Ah, uh, I feel so bad. Well, no. Okay. I'll go along. We've got to get the, some, some pew pew in to at least make the cover art legit. An unguided bomb. That sounds more fun. Well, we'll just do it in order. An unguided bomb. TGIF to TGIF to you. Man, if you did not watch the Tucker Carlson Vladimir Putin interview being broadcast on TuckerCarlson.com, it's on X as well, and I'm sure other people have it up by now. It's quite long, but you know. How often do you get to sit down and get a lecture from Vladimir Putin, right? And so he goes over this long history of the uh, long history of uh, Russian, well, long Russian history, going back to the beginning when the USSR, before the USSR was formed, and then up to, and then up to today, and then references all those points in history to the Ukraine area. And he says there's no such thing as a Ukrainian people. You know, they just designated that area as Ukraine, kind of like they did Palestine. There's no Palestinian people. They just come from a place that was called Palestine. They're not... So, But he says, and then everybody living there, they brought all the Hungarian traditions, but they all speak Russian over time, and they've always been, you know, real close trade-wise and everything. And then in certain treaties, they were granted the area officially, and then the United States or other people will come along and say, well, everything wasn't in fine paperwork, so we're going to go ahead and take this. And he says there's been some major, major encroachments, like NATO lying and saying that they would never expand and that they did expand. And they're like, what do you have to worry about? We're friends. So he said, well, okay, well, let me join NATO. And... Bill Clinton and other presidents told him, yeah, sure, we'll, we'll see about getting you into NATO. And then they denied him getting into NATO. So he says, well, then how else am I supposed to look at the shit that you put on our borders? What is adversarial? You know, let me be a part of NATO. And they said no. Uh, and then he said, uh, Nazi forces people in the past at different wars and he mentions them specifically specific people which i don't know it's not my history so i don't pay much attention but he names certain generals and certain peoples and he's like these people were all have all been praised recently and statues have been erected to these people well these all these people's people that they're erecting the statues to they're all nazis there's there's still part of that and that they've erected those statues in Ukraine, and despite Zelensky's father uh, 
being a Jew, I guess, and being a, a patriot fighter, fought the Nazis. He says, you, so you've got these people pushing up from Poland that, uh, that are still very Nazi. And he goes, are we going to eradicate it or not? And he says, so they have pushed and pushed and pushed. And he says, along with our CIA, it's still loading. I'm not kidding. We'll give it another minute or two and see if it's locked up. So he says the CIA helped them uh, stage a coup to start getting a regime change in the Ukraine area. And that there's a heavy Nazi presence. So he says, well, you know, again, what are we going to do? Didn't we agree across the world that this must be, this must not ever come back? Putin said he will end all conflict if we back the hell up, stop supplying them with weapons and arms, and back up. Does he, he claims he has no interest in expanding Russian territory in any way. And he says, I'm not the one who's lied. Now, I don't know. I don't deal with Vladimir Putin and Russians. You're a lot closer to them than I am. He really makes us look in the terms of like a Joe Rogan interview. So Joe Rogan, imagine Joe Rogan interviewing Putin. So what you're saying is we become liars, bullies, assholes, and we are to blame for everything. Oh, and then he, he dropped a bomb saying... If you think the president's running the United States and his administration are running the United States, you're deluded. That the elites are running everything. And they're the ones that have been keeping him out of NATO. And uh, he also says, you know, Boris Johnson from the UK came over and said, yeah, we'll get you into NATO. And then he vanished. No, oh, he wouldn't... Uh, Oh, that's what he was saying about Boris Johnson. Boris Johnson agreed to do some peace talks and then dropped out of the scene. I don't know what's going on with DCS World. But it shouldn't sure as hell take this long to run a, uh, to start a mission. So, backing out again. So open up the task manager and kill it. Yes. Lord. Can't kill it twice. I agree with you, sir. I believe it just was frozen. So, the only response our government had at the moment, and I haven't looked because I've been doing all this stuff, trying to mess with it. And then President Biden goes on television after the interview takes place, and we thought that, well, maybe he's going to do a rebuttal. You know, him being the American president, he would probably already have access to the interview before it aired, and he would have prepared notes to rebuttal point for point what Vladimir Putin had to say. So I was very much looking forward to that. So he comes on, and all he talked about is classified documents and how he's not a criminal and then feigned insults it just you know if you were remove both men from politics and just imagine both men getting up there and talking about airplanes okay 
the cost of food, whatever. Pick a subject. And just overdub the, the words in the interviews, the press briefings. Uh, either way, just, you know, Vladimir Putin seems so sharp, lucid. I mean, my God, to go out there with no notes and just do the whole history of Russia and the Ukraine area. The whole history. From like, you know, before the 16th century. An impressive man. And then our president comes up there calling everybody the wrong names, talking about Mexico and Egypt, and he's he just... It's ridiculous. He's ridiculous. It... So anyway, the only thing that our Department of Defense guy, John Kirby, said after or before the interview actually came out, he said, don't believe anything Vladimir Putin says, period. That's it. That's it. Just don't believe any of it. Don't believe the factual history. Don't believe any of it. Okay, seeing if this one will load. Uh, all right. Yeah, so that's it. I want, I would love for the president to even attempt to do a rebuttal that's point for point. If not, I would be satisfied if the White House or Department of Defense put together a point for point. If you're going to say everything is a lie then go through everything he said, including every bit of freaking history that he went through, and I want a point-for-point point rebuttal on everything. If you can't do so, what are we to believe? You can't just say, don't believe anything he says. Why? He made us look like Bitches. Lying, bullying, stealing, Nazi, elitist controlled bitches. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to use the internal 30 millimeter cannon. We will start the lesson in active pause mode. Under the forward fuselage of the SC 25T is a twin barrel Gish 20 30 millimeter cannon with a 200 round magazine. The 30 millimeter cannon round is armor piercing high explosive that is best against light armor and unarmored targets. The rounds include a tracer that you can use to better judge where the rounds are impacting. The firing rate is 3,000 rounds per minute with a muzzle velocity of 870 meters per second. You can turn on the cockpit lighting by pressing L. Press the space bar to continue. Go ahead and enable air to ground mode by pressing 7. To select a cannon as the active weapon, press C. With the cannon selected, take a look at the weapon status panel. In the bottom right corner is the indication for cannon rounds remaining. The K indicates a full magazine, and there are indications for half and one fourth. In the top right corner of the panel is the weapon type indicator that shows the cannon is selected. Press the space bar to unpause the lesson and fly through all the gates ahead. I think he was referring to something over here, but I don't remember. This lower left will be way down here and that's not where you're looking. I'm a dumbass. Oh well.
given that it's pretty dark out, you want to keep a close eye on your instruments and your radar altimeter on the HUD. We'll be flying pretty low, so make sure you don't get below the route altitudes. As before, fly through all the gates ahead, and we'll talk more about the gun as we get closer to the target. Watch your altitude at the next gate. It's a low one. On the HUD, you will note that gun is displayed in the bottom left corner, indicating its selection. right corner of the HUD is a box that indicates the remaining ammunition in quarters, four being full and one being one quarter full. Along the left side of the HUD is the maximum and minimum range bars, just like you saw with rockets. When the range carries between the two bars, the cannon is within range of the point beneath the aiming reticle on the HUD. When in range, the LA indication will be displayed. Oh, shit. I thought we were done with the gates. Oh, well. Shit. See about this one. Please don't make me go through them all again. I don't know which one I missed. If I did, probably back over that ridge. And then we came over, I saw blue targets, the runway, and then we had a bunch of red targets we were moving in on.
trying to slip. All right, let me catch up chat. Okay. Uh, what I was, I know, autocorrect, and I should have been, but what I was trying to do is figure out how to disengage. Again, uh, I'm trying the H, I tried Control H, Shift H, tapping the A multiple times, and I've got, I've got to figure out how to, uh, I had like several, Autopilot commands that were just locked in place, and I couldn't break them. I was trying to break them, and I was messing with that. Okay, if you open the hashtag, you can open the air traffic control menu, and then you can also talk to Darkstar1. Okay, that was something earlier. Yeah. The SG-25 spins when you chew pull too much. Yeah, gotta find the Zen again with the SU-25. We're gonna learn how to use the internal 30 millimeter cannon. Yes, sir. Start the lesson in active pause mode. Under the forward fuselage of the SU-25T is a twin barrel GISH-20 30 millimeter cannon Gish. with a 200 round magazine. The 30 millimeter cannon round is armor piercing high explosive that is best against light armor and unarmored targets. The rounds include a tracer that you can use to better judge where the rounds are impacting. The firing rate is 3,000 rounds per minute with a muzzle velocity of 870 meters per second. You can turn on the cockpit lighting by pressing L. Press the space bar to continue. But it's, but it's already on. and enable air to ground mode by pressing 7. To select a cannon as the active weapon, press C. With the cannon selected, take a look at the weapon status panel. In the bottom right corner is the indication for cannon rounds remaining. The K indicates a full magazine, and there are indications for half and one-fourth. In the top right corner of the panel is the weapon type indicator, that shows the cannon is selected. Press the space bar to unpause the lesson and fly through all the gates ahead. Given that it's pretty dark out, you want to keep a close eye on your instruments and your radar altimeter on the HUD. We'll be flying pretty low, so make sure you don't get below the route altitudes. As before, fly through all the gates ahead, and we'll talk more about the gun as we get closer to the target.
watch your altitude at the next gate. It's a low one. you'll note that gun is displayed in the bottom left corner indicating its selection. In the lower right corner of the HUD is a box that indicates the remaining ammunition and quarters four being full and one being one quarter full. side of the HUD is the maximum and minimum range bars, just like we saw with rockets. When the range carries between the two bars, the cannon is within range of the point beneath the aiming reticle on the HUD. When in range, the LA indication will be displayed. That's where I screwed up last time. Right there. We'll now start a dive on the target that consists of a couple trucks marked with red smoke. To help aid you see in them, some illumination flares will be dropped over the target area. Continue flying through the gates to line up with the target. Watch your airspeed and fly to place the aiming reticle over the target. Press the space bar when you get the LAQ. The LA, the what? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> uh oh. Come on, frog. Jump, jump. Come on, get out of it. Can't. <laughs> nope. Son of a gun. Okay. Well. Man. Yet again. So, man, that was like a slow ride, too. Who's that? Where'd my chat go? Oh. Ooh. It is hidden now behind.
Yeah, I was slipping the whole... I was uh, definitely slipping trying to get the plane to... I was definitely applying a lot of rudder in that, for sure. Some gates I was trying to slip sideways. Let me see. Okay. Okay. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to use the internal 30 millimeter cannon. We will start the lesson in active pause mode. Go ahead and enable air to ground mode by pressing 7. To select the cannon as the active weapon, press C. With the cannon selected, take a look at the weapon status panel. In the bottom right corner is the indication for cannon rounds remaining. Given that it's pretty dark out, you want to keep a close eye on your instruments and your radar altimeter on the HUD. We'll be flying pretty low, so make sure you don't get below the route altitudes. As before, fly through all the gates ahead, and we'll talk more about the gun as we get closer to the target. You're shitting me. Let's see if we can bypass. Maybe not. No. Son of a gun. That time I was just going to try to gun it, but not enough finesse on that curve. So you taught me how to speed up now, just keep hitting space bar. And now I've got to learn how to speed up through this course. So, and apply uh, brakes more appropriately when needed. Okay, seven, C. Under the forward fuselage of the SC-25T is a twin barrel gish. Go ahead and enable air to ground mode by pressing seven. Select a cannon as the active weapon, press C. With the cannon selected, take a look at the weapon status panel. In the bottom right corner, is given that it's pretty dark out, you want to keep a close eye on your instruments and your radar altimeter on the HUD. We'll be flying pretty low, so make sure you don't get below the route altitudes. As before, fly through all the gates ahead, and we'll talk more about the gun as we get closer to the target. You're shitting me. All right, well, let's see if... Uh, uh, if you miss one again. Let's just try to get it to the end.
nope, nope, nope. But that was a pretty quick run. Quicker. So that first corner. Too scared to go full speed again on that one. And I'm applying brakes going around that first corner and then try not to break over the whole hill thing and then coming down all brakes. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to use the internal 30 millimeter cannon. We will start the lesson in active pause mode. Under the forward fuselage of the SC-25T, is a go ahead and enable air to ground mode. After to select the cannon as the active weapon, press C. With the cannon selected, take a look at the weapon status panel. In the bottom right corner is the indication for cannon rounds remaining. Okay, given that it's pretty dark out, you want to keep a close eye on your instruments and your radar altimeter on the HUD. We'll be flying pretty low, so make sure you don't get below the route altitudes. As before, fly through all the gates ahead, and we'll talk more about the gun as we get closer to the target. Son of a gun. See again. Didn't hit it. Didn't get it. Wow. My skills are out the window. Noob. Back to noob. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing doing a live stream where you fail over and over again. Uh, Baldur's Gate. <laughs> Which I haven't finished up and I really need to. I need to clear up more space on the drive. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to use the... Inter if you want to bail out right now, I recommend everybody bail out at this point because it's going to be nothing but failure from here on out. If you want to stick around, wow. God bless you. Uh, so, but if you want to watch somebody just fail over and over again for, I don't know, a little while, hey, stick around. Do, 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 do. Today's song is Bad Attraction from Brad Sucks. Don't get me wrong. Every bit help of thank you, thank you. Got my hands together. The prayer emoji. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I wanna do my own thing, but I Have a blessed night. It's been suggested, maybe I wanna be your best friend. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so have a blessed night, and uh, hopefully we can do some pew pew tomorrow. So. I'll do a special Saturday Sky Dude, and I'll just try to be on uh, as soon as I can. Okay. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for everything. Always. Oh. Ah, sorry, about you. sorry about the eardrums.
You're shitting me. I may have missed the first one. I hope not. Hope that counted. Uh-oh. Sick as a dog. Sick as a dog. That's how I felt halfway watching that interview last night. You don't know what I'm talking about. The uh, Tucker Carlson, Vladimir Putin interview. Available at TuckerCarlson.com. Hopefully wherever you're at. It's good to hear all sides of the story, isn't it? So... I really recommend it highly, everybody, you know, and then then we can talk about it. All I know is we've got to get the world under control. It sounds so easy sitting at the at a desk playing a, a video game. We missed it, we missed it. Gives us a chance to go through the course again. I was hoping to keep a steep angle and make it... I wish I had a better canopy. Blame it on the canopy, man. Ah, maybe next time. Don't try to do tricks. Just try to get get through it. I told you. Anybody who's watching at this point, it's one of those. You're just gonna watch somebody failing over and over and over again for the next at least thirty minutes. At maybe. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to use the internal... It's going to be Groundhog Day. We will start the lesson in active pause mode. Under the forward fuselage of the SC-25T is a twin-barrel GISH-20 30mm cannon with a 200-round... Go ahead and enable air-to-ground mode by pressing 7. To select the cannon as the active weapon, press C. With the cannon selected, take a look at the weapon status panel. In the bottom right corner is the indication for cannon rounds remaining. K indicates a full magazine. Given that it's pretty dark out, All right. you want to keep a close eye on your instruments. Full throttle. Altimeter on the HUD. One low, couple of notches of trim. Below the right. Altitudes. As before, fly through all the gates ahead, and we'll talk more about the gun as we get. So I was hoping to make an angled approach, like an arc approach at an angle, say that through here and keep it clean but I've been losing control of my nose. It's okay, go ahead. So pulling back a little bit, tiny bit, tiny bit. See, lost the nose. Yeah. Then I blacked out and I crashed. Told ya. Bad attraction, yeah. Yeah, I think everybody should watch it. Think about it. You don't even have to immediately if you don't want to have a good, you know, reaction to it. In this lesson, just, we're going to learn how to use the internal... Just let it gel a bit. We'll start the lesson in active pause mode. Under the four... But it's something we should probably all talk about. It's a twin-barrel GISH-20 30-millimeter cannon with a 200 round magazine. The 30 millimeter cannon round is armor piercing high explosive that is best against light armor and unarmored targets. The rounds include a trace. Go ahead and enable it. To select the cannon as the active weapon, press C. With the cannon selected, take a look at the weapon status panel. In the bottom right corner, given that it's pretty dark out, you want to keep a close eye on your instruments and your radar altimeter on the HUD. We'll be flying pretty low, so make sure you don't get below the route altitudes. As before, fly through all the gates ahead, and we'll talk more about the gun as we get closer to the target.
All right. I'll slow down. But it'd be nice to be able to do this at the highest speed possible. Okay. Go ahead. Thank you, sir. We're going ahead. Retarded. Pardon my uh, lack of political correctness. That was something. That was something that was new at one point. I think a little. You know, there was a time when the term political correctness showed up. And so I'm from the time right before that where everybody was like, shit. Yeah, I'm trying to be, you know, it's one of those. You try to be gentle on the stick, but then, it's, you know, at some point, it, there's like too gentle. And all of a sudden, you lose control. And you just have to ham fist it. And so it's, it's different because everything that we've been doing and when flying around, it's how to have a, a light touch. So, you know. You're not all over the place. I've got to learn how to eject. Woohoo! Okay, we have to learn how to eject. E. Mm -hmm. No. That does not work. Pressing the wrong thing. I said there was going to be a lot of failure. It's uh, during the five o'clock hour. Oh. Three times. This is a perfect time for a smoke break. I think I do too much smoking. Not enough, not enough flying.
wonder if you have any parachute controls. And you... <laughs> How do you eject out of your parachute? And is he actually going down? I think. Maybe. Nah. Nah. What else is the news? Hey, Marvels. What's up with Disney social media and the Marvels? They're all of a sudden, all of their bots unleashed on social media. And the first thing out of their mouths was, see, Marvels is great and people are loving it. And you suck because you didn't support it in the theater. You woman hating insoles. Incels? Ponsel? Ponsels? In this lesson, we're going to learn how to use the internal 30 millimeter cannon. In this lesson, we are going to learn how to turn down the volume of our instructor. Is that helmet? Uh, you can do voice. I believe now they've said it's been added. Voice chat radio options. Nothing's happening. Or microphone test. Nothing. Nothing is happening. Nothing there. Well, let's see if that does it. Doesn't have a instructor. Yeah, that worked. Lights, lights, space bar. Seven, C, space bar. Sip of coffee. Space bar. Full throttle. So, uh, left off with, you know, getting the controls, getting the controls right, or the joystick right, for maximum control. So, what am I trying to say? Uh, it's hard to do a feather touch. At least it is for me right at the, at the moment, trying to make some of these turns. So it's like, instead of being light, like, rip it for all it's worth. Become that ham-fisted person you've always wanted to be. Grab it, your joystick is 
tight as possible and exert as much squeeze and force down your arm. And just say, damn it, move exactly where I want. It's a fight, it's a struggle. <laughs> I envy those that have got the deft touch, you know, the martial art deft touch, whatever. They just, ah, oh, I only make a slight adjustment. Pardon the, uh, the accent. It, it's not really meant to be a, a mock accent. Uh, there's a reverence behind it. Hope that makes it okay and acceptable. Uh, uh, you ha have the deaf touch. Um, it would be nice to be able to fly that way. But no, right at the moment, no, it's not. If I try that, it just, yeah, like that, son of a bitch. Okay, and then she doesn't. So brakes, hard turn, hard rudder, nose up, and losing control. Come on. Don't break. Ah, try to save it. Yeah. And then sometimes feeling like like it finesse moments that, like that. And the ham fisting doesn't seem to work. Or just uh, old in my coordination and hand-eye, and it's all just starting to fall apart. The dead zone on the joystick actually feels pretty good, but maybe it's needing to shorten, shorten the curve. Okay, so... This commands. Okay, so to find your sensitivities, you have to select axis commands and then pitch roll and rudder. All right, then it's axis tune. So you'll see I've already added in a little bit of dead zone because as soon as I got in, maybe I shouldn't have, maybe I should bring that back down. Maybe it's too much because it, maybe it's just responding a little too late. So we can try that too. Cut it in half. Oh, rudder. Might as well too. L, L, space, 7, C, space. Go ahead and enable air ground by pressing 7. Ah, uh, no, can't rush it. 7, C, space, space, full speed. Nose trimmed down, maybe a little too much.
All right. So, Kenny pointed out that I'm using too much rudder, and I'm trying to slip. And that's proving to be a little bit difficult. Okay. So, go back to the controls. This is what I wanted to add it. This is what I wanted to add in initially. Okay, so access tune. So, the saturation. Okay, so there, it, from what I get from the manual, saturation is the full range motion of an axis. Okay, so when I'm turning the rudder, let's go well, right now. Okay, run, pitch. All right. For it to fully kick in and be at maximum, I've got to go the full length of the axis. Right. So at that point, it's exerting its, its maximums in a turn or whatever. But that if I'm not getting enough responsiveness, they say, if I understand right, that we can shorten this. So the full range of the joystick, I don't have to muscle it all the way out here. Get that turn. I can shorten it to where I'm going to get the maximum turn in here somewhere. All right, so we're going to mess with that. That's what we're looking for. And then uh, X, Y, okay. Is that it? Version Y is... No, which one is which? Or that seems more like what I was talking about. That's on the pitch now. I get it. Let's see what that does. Whee! Well, let's just do this. Maybe more. Trim, trim. Trim, trim, Peru. I do the flying and dying, it's true. All you. So, I rely on friends. I don't listen to a lot of radio anymore, and I don't really follow much of anything new. I'm stuck in my ways.
Merci. And... But I'm always up for having them introduce me to whatever they're listening to. And they say, see, there's some good stuff out there. And I'm like, well, that's what I rely on you for. I mean, because I, I don't. So it's not that I'm opposed to. I think most of the things that I've, whenever I've tuned in, I've not been happy. So, well, you know. But please, that's what friends are for. You're supposed to turn me on to what you think is the best stuff ever. And Betty... Betty is my Star Trek Online. Um, I'm the wing person. She's the leader. She's usually in in fighting situations. She is the um, tactical starfighter. She is a tactical starfighter, and I am an engineering starfighter. So. That is why you know, I'm the wingman to Betty. Okay. She turned me on to this Chris Stapleton song called What Are You Listening To? Which is kind of what we're talking about. What Are You Listening To? by Chris Stapleton. I wish I could play it, but it would shut down the stream for copyright violation. Oh, I'm going to go, I'm going to add more. It, it should stick to the one you added on last. And I'm not really sure, you know, this is usually like straight up progression. It's like slow in and slow out kind of thing. I don't really, in animation, I, I, I try to get my head around it that way. Like slow in and slow out. And I don't really understand. Yet. It almost seems like that would defeat the purpose of just having instant response, a linear, linear, right? Whatever. <clears throat> oh, maybe I didn't add them to the other ones. Let's double check. Oh, got to do it with all of them. All right. Let's see what we got. Rudder, 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 move the nose, move the nose, move the nose. See, that rudder, I want the rudder to, to slide my nose over, and so I'm applying right rudder, but I can't, I'm having a tough time getting my nose to slip.
Uh, that was close. I, th I think I made it. Damn it. Fast. So I'm not getting the kind of rudder response that I'm looking for. I've got something configured in a weird way. But what, you know, I want to slip as hard as I can. And so I'll throw full rudder over and then try to bring the nose about. And the nose just doesn't want to go. No dead zone. Let's try no dead zone on the rudder. And bring it in even tighter. Let's see what we get after we blow up. So yeah, on this musical part of the, the show, as I was saying, I can't play it. But I would really recommend if you haven't heard it and you you never heard What Are You Listening To by Chris Chris Stapleton. Should really open up another YouTube window and play that. See if that doesn't hit you in the feels. And I don't know, like me, like uh, musical criteria. And like, well, it hits this mark, and it hits this mark, and it hits this mark, and you have all these internal musical uh, categories. And I think you'll find that it hits on, it'll hit on all your criteria levels. It'll hit you and hit you and hit you, and like, wow, that's a, but that's me. That's how I that's how I feel you will react to it. And most people are reacting to it. Okay. Full speed. More nose trimmed down. Flip. Full rudder over, trying to get the nose around, trying to get the nose around. There we go. Let's... Still full rudder, trying to get that nose, my nose, on that gate. While flying full rudder, because I'm going to have to be making a turn. And I couldn't get, now I can't get any elevation. What's going on with the controller? What did I do? <laughs> Somehow I, I nerfed my pitch. I couldn't I couldn't pull up any higher. Hilarious. Okay, well back to the drawing board with that. Uh oh. What? What is this? Okay, our pitch. Reset. Well, 
What? Did they all... I don't understand. Did they all reset? Is there something that I should have hit? Save? That's not right at all. Interesting. All right, now that they stick. Okay. So why did it blast them up? All right, I absolutely have to go get a refill now. I've gone through all of my coffee, so and um, at least stand up and stretch for a minute too. So back over here, and again, today's song is "Bad Attraction" by Brad Sex. I'll be right back. Yeah. 
I can't play. Can't play sick as a dog. Not well. Not that I can't play it. Just today. Today we're only covering bad attraction. Grohl, Grohl esque. Dave Grohl, the drummer, original drummer for Nirvana, and then you know Foo Fighters. Dave Grohl. Uh, he's got uh, the best way I can describe it. Uh, a scream like that when you're yelling, scream singing, yell singing. Paul McCartney I was able to do it uh, in uh, a second. Oh, darling. Paul McCartney and Oh Darling. Think about the chorus where he's just belting it out. And he's got that echo at the end of it. How awesome is that? So yeah, so uh, like that kind of singing where you're just rah, you know, letting it all out. Uh, Grohl-esque. And Brad, when he's doing the, his scream singing part of uh, Bad Attraction, very Grohl, McCartney, rock-esque, kick-assness. All right, I'm going to slow down a little bit. By the rudder. Come on. Come on, nose. Ah. Now, now it's now it seems like it's slower. Maybe I, you know, maybe it is supposed. To, I don't know. What the hell. Now, now all the controls feel nerfed in that way. Oh my goodness. So maybe I have the, the concept of saturation completely wrong, right? Okay. So we're, and now we're just, I'll have to read on that one later. We'll just open it all the way back up again. Oh, I should have tried to eject myself into the ground. A missed opportunity. Control E E E. Okay.
son of a bitch. No, oh, I made the gate. I, I thought the enemy showed up then. Where do we miss the enemy now? All I saw were the flares. We made it to the last audible. So now what? Uh huh. -huh. So it's the blue guys. Can't make her flip. No, nah. I missed my control E E again. I now have just had a flashback, and. It was me, uh, when I first started messing with this. Somebody asked me, uh, or I made a social post on Twitter. And said I wasn't broadcasting DCS World because it's too painful to just have somebody sit, uh, just to somebody sit there and watch me fail over and over and over and over and over. And so now I'm just getting that deja vu and that memory back. Uh, yeah, now I remember why I didn't live stream DCS in the first place. <laughs> you know, it's a completely different beast from what I've been doing, mostly. The good news is we do, you know... We do have a lot of flying experience uh, under our belt, but just felt like a total rookie today. Everything has been rookie, rookie, rookie. Less than.
Son of a gun. Control E E E. Ah, got us out of there that time. I think. I didn't see the parachute. Uh oh. Says Republican leaders want to interview me. Mm -mm -mm. The money would be nice. Could you imagine just not having to worry? Oh, I just want, you know, whatever is the best, just here. Just have that, having that kind of money just to throw around. It it must be nice, but I'm I'm terrified of the power, uh, corruption thing. I mean, as little tiny moments of my own life. I mean, like in a small little crappy jobs, you know, where where I'm in power, and I have power. I don't like it. Uh, sometimes having to be the heavy, you know, or or you know in. Just how easy it is to abuse power and my own failings dealing with situations of power. I don't like it, and I don't like who I am, and I don't like any of it. And so, uh, man, if I were smart, I'd be hitting respond. But. You know, I don't, uh, you know, I'll, I'm happy to rant on social media and put my thoughts out there and say what I got to say, but. I'd, I'd rather make six bucks on YouTube at the moment. Please like and subscribe. So I think you'll have no problem up to that point where the, you get that major curve right there before you hit that hill. Okay, so I swung out and then tried to swing back and be all make it all nice and pretty and it's pretty tough right there for me. So the first run I did was at like uh, like 300 knots. I'm doing like six 600. So the first time I came through, I just took it super easy. So I was using full speed brakes. Didn't apply flaps. Yeah, going slower than that. Sixty, hundred fifty, three ten. 
Uh 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 uh. Too slow. Lost it. Lost it. Oh, I think you're supposed to open the canopy canopy first. I I think I just blew myself all over the the can the, the glass screen or whatever. The canopy. Yeah. Man. So try to remember to do that first next time. Five hundred and forty knots. Watch your altitude at the next gate. It's a low.
I'm not certain what he's talking about. If he's talking about these guys here, I don't know what he's talking about. Are we shooting the flares? Or are we shooting the guys? stationary I'm the one who's not turning around That's tough, folks. That was my last shot. They have an unlimited ammo. Right? Wow, imagine doing this in VR, what a trip. Come on, all three, okay.
Okay. Again. Um. Let's go back to the main menu and then go back into the options screen. Because I'm going to need more than 200 rounds, as you can see. It's an option greatly reduces the complexity and challenge of flying an aircraft. I, I should I should really try this. At least once. Is that cheating? Yeah, that's cheating, isn't it? I'm already cheating with the uh unlimited weapons. Alright, well let's see what it's like. Can it really help an idiot like me? I don't think I passed a single one of these. I've managed to screw everyone up. I think I turned him down too much now. Because what he's telling me about the guns, I'm really not getting. He's telling me that when I get over the target, I, these indicators should do something for me down here. And I just haven't got, quite got that yet. It's a twin barrel Gish 20 30 millimeter cannon. Gish. With a 200 round magazine. 200 round magazine. 30 millimeter cannon round is best against light armor and unarmored target. armor piercing and high explosive. Rounds include a tracer that you can use to better judge where the rounds are impacting. The firing rate is 3,000 rounds per minute. Lights, lights, base. You can turn on the cockpit lighting by pressing L. Go ahead and enable air to ground mode. Have to select seven. The active weapon. The press C. base. Space. With the cannon selected, take a look at the weapon status. Okay. I need to check and see if my flaps are working. Indication for cannon rounds remaining. The K indicates a full magazine, and there are indications Space. for Space. And one fourth. In the top right, given that it's pretty dark out, you want to keep a close eye on your instruments and your radar altimeter on the HUD. We'll be flying pretty low, so make sure you don't get below the route altitudes. Okay, there's flaps. Fly through all the gates ahead. And we'll talk more about the gun as we get flaps closer. off. Flaps on. Boiler on. too hard. I can't main, uh, maintain a bank roll without descending too hard. Maybe with more, a little bit more speed, but pretty at all. Watch your altitude at the next gate. It's a low one.
on the HUD, you will note that gun is displayed in the bottom left corner, indicating its selection. In the lower right corner of the HUD is a box that indicates the remaining ammunition in quarters, four being full and one being one quarter full. Inside the HUD is the maximum and minimum range bars, just like you saw with rockets. When the range carries between the two bars, the cannon is within range of the point beneath the aiming reticle on the HUD. When in range, the LA indication will be displayed. Okay, trucks. To help aid you see in them, some illumination flares we dropped over the target area. I'm over there shooting at the flares. Those don't line me up on the trucks. Shooting at the flares. Watch your airspeed and fly to place the aiming reticle over the target. Press the space bar. Fly to the gates to line up on the trucks. Okay, so I'm dumb though. Hey, I have to totally claim my dumbness. Um. For shooting at flares. So let's say we come to this shallow point in the terrain up ahead, over this, over this hill here. Okay. Now let's slow down and turn around. to come in at a little bit different angle I think Let's see over this hill Lesson now by pressing escape key or practice on the remaining targets marked with the green okay. before the illumination. So, coming at that angle, it's a little bit difficult. So, coming in the other way, that's still pretty tight. Well, we hit one and we could we could call it a win, but yeah.
You know which one is really making me mad? I'm still thinking about it. I've been thinking about it this whole time nonstop. I love navigation. And so this one here, this uh, IFR, it, it's just been weighing on me and weighing on me and weighing on me. And I feel I'm still missing something. I couldn't, uh, I couldn't figure out what the HSI or the other needles were telling me how to intercept the VO of uh, the localizer and then take it in for an ILS landing, um, an IFR landing. In the past two lessons, we learned the basics of navigation and landing under ideal conditions. In this lesson, we're going to put what you learned to the test by finding an airfield and landing on it at night during a thunderstorm. Sounds fun, huh? Let's turn on the cockpit light by pressing L. So let's select return mode by pressing 1. As I mentioned in the last lesson, the airfield identification number is displayed in the lower right corner of the HUD. 21 is the ID code for Beslan Airfield, the smallest runway I can find in the game just for you. If you want to get return steering to a different airfield, you can press left control and tilde until you select the airfield you want. A complete list of airfield ID numbers is located in the back of the SU-25T flight manual. For now, let's keep it on 21. Press the space bar to continue. Using what you learned about course steering through the HUD and ADI, fly the assigned return course that will lead you to the ILS intercept for Beslan Airfield. As you start to descend, you'll probably pick up a lot of speed. Don't forget that you can deploy the air brakes by pressing B. Okay. So, the needle is the localizer, but then the HSI needles are to the left and below. And I've engaged an autopilot again, and yeah. No, no, I 
area. So I'm trying to get my auto. I, whenever I set an autopilot control, I can't seem to get out of it and unlock it. I see it down there. Is left of center, you need to fly to the left. If the localizer is to the right of center, you need to fly to the right. No, that's not it. Always fly to the needle. I think so. It says it's 20 miles ahead still. As you pass over the inner marker beam, you may have noticed a little bit of crosswind south to north. To counter this, input a little left rudder by pressing Z and add a little right bank to keep your nose tracking down the runway. That is the, the airport. But I, I the HS, I don't get it. I don't get what's up with the HSI and why I'm not seeing the, uh, I don't know. I think I got us out that time. Yahoo! Got the canopy opened. Um.
What? A drag. See if there's any brightness controls. Oh, yeah. I wanted to see if there was a way to get a better cockpit. Terrain textures are textures. What's the difference between cockpit and terrain? You can't adjust these in game mode. Just toggle these. Past two lessons, we learned the basics of navigation and landing. See, that's Alt 3 for Alt level. Let me do Alt 3 again, see if it turns it off. Landing on you at night during a thunderstorm. Sounds fine, huh? Let's turn on the cockpit light. Okay, we've got to get that under control. How do we disengage it? Autopilot disengage, left alt nine. Autopilot override, left A. One moment. So let's select return mode by pressing 1. As I mentioned in the last lesson, the airfield identification number is displayed in the lower right corner of the HUD. 21 is the ID code for Beslan Airfield, the smallest runway I could find in the game just for you. If you want to get return steering to a different airfield, you can press left control and tilde until you select the airfield you want. 
A complete list of airfield ID numbers is located in the back of the SU-25T flight manual. For now, let's keep it on 21. Press the space bar to continue. Using what you learned about core steering through the HUD and ADI, fly the assigned return course that will lead you to the, you'll probably pick up a lot of speed. Don't forget that you can deploy the air brakes by pressing B. So it's strange, I'm not understanding, maybe it wants us to intercept a point out at, uh, like, 23. Because when we're right over the airport, the landing field, it says that, uh, they're like 23 miles away. saying Closer to the airfield, I should also mention that not all airfields have Russian ILS, as we had in the last lesson. Airfields that do include Mozdok, Krimsk, Mykop, and Krasnodar Center. Meaning that Beslan does not have this, you will not have the HUD ILS indications. However, if you look down your HSI, you'll notice a dashed cross in the center in both solid vertical and horizontal lines. The dashed lines are fixed and represent the optimal glide slope and localizer positions with the solid ones. Press the space bar to continue. If the glide slope bar is below the dash line, you are above glide slope. If it is above the dash line, you are under glide slope. If the localizer line is left to center, you need to fly to the left. If the localizer is to the right of center, you need to fly to the right. You always fly to the
that the field? So you definitely can't keep your gear down and your flaps down and your speed brakes on for long. You know what we should do. Yep, what I need to do is just end it here so so much for that okay well we can't say it's a total bust today i said set up and pew pew right so we did do some shooting we did do some setting up we did do some pew pew and i hit one thing and i killed one thing in today's live stream Oh, man. Okay, so Henning might be around tomorrow, and I'm going to have to just keep at this all night long if I'm going to be worth anything to try to be ready to go into a server with him and possibly try to shoot. So it's unfortunate that uh, my skills just suck. I suck. There's no real other way around it. Um, I might start start up another live stream to just keep doing this tonight but this one's running along and after a certain amount of time you can't edit your live streams anymore they're just locked in place so i can't let it run too too long so but i'm gonna keep at it all night so yeah let me take a dinner break and do some things around the domicile and then uh See about coming back later. All right. Today's song was Brad Sucks Bad Attraction. Tell by your middle finger that you're warming up to me. 